I saw money from different schools, savings, bonds, women, two Cadillacs. You know, what we need is two Cadillacs. Anything they thought that really caught your attention? Cattle, livestock? Yeah, livestock. Pretty much at any time in college athletics, there's a scandal going on. Thirteen members of the football team received about $47,000 in school year 1985-86. Eight of those student athletes continued to receive another $14,000 during the fall of 1986. The thing that, that really set SMU apart was just the fact that so many high-ranking officials at that institution um, and you know, even within the, the state government, um, you know, board of regents, et cetera, were, were culpable and, and complicit in what went on there. In its report, the Committee on Infractions says severe penalties have been levied to make up for the great competitive advantage SMU has gained over the years. They are meant to serve as an example for other universities that are tempted to follow in SMU's footsteps. I have no doubt in the near future we're going to see a tremendous turnaround, a tremendous cleanup in intercollegiate athletics. I think the, the question is, has it served as a deterrent from other schools? I think you, you, might, you might say it hasn't because obviously schools continue to um, you know, misbehave and, and break rules and, and so forth. But I think, ironically, I think it's probably impacted the NCAA perhaps more than more than the schools itself because you know, of course they've not you know they've not you know gone in that direction since the Heisman Trophy Trust is expected to strip the running back of the top award by the end of the month the trust is investigating whether Reggie Bush took gifts while still in college if so that was a break of NCAA rules a sports agency recruiter was secretly recorded saying if we take care of everybody we control everything you can make millions off one kid one of the schools being investigated, Powerhouse Louisville. The program, led by head coach Rick Patino, is already on NCAA probation for a scandal involving escorts hired to woo recruits. We've not really struck the appropriate balance between enforcement, but I think also focusing on um, or, or taking a more realistic approach to you know, where should we be as an association? You know, what, what are the rules that really need to be in place, those foundational rules to maintain, you know, fairness of play and, and competitive balance versus, you know, where are some areas where we're, you know, we're maybe a little more heavy-handed. Isn't it a little bit silly to suggest that an industry with this size TV contract, with this size salaries for the coaches, somehow is, quote, an amateur industry? I mean, if, if someone wants to you know, offer you an endorsement deal because they feel like, you know, you've, you've kind of gotten yourself to that level that, that you're marketable and, and they want to align themselves with you and, and compensate you for that, then to me that's a different issue than, than being paid, you know, by a school to come and play for that school. I can see, I can see a distinction there. And so I think that's maybe a, a middle ground where it might feel a little, you know, a little bit fairer, so to speak, um, so that um, so that the student athletes who have achieved at a high level and, and have some uh, marketability can, can capitalize from that.